Thank you. All right, hello everyone and welcome to our summer quarterly meeting for the Community College Consortium for OER at the Open Education Global. We're so glad you could join us. Um, we've got some good information to share with you and uh, we also want to hear from you uh, about your summer activities. Let me just give you a little overview of the agenda. As usual, this meeting is packed. Um, and in the meanwhile, if you haven't shared or if you'd like to share again uh, your name and the college and maybe even your role uh, at your college um, in the chat window, that would be super. Um, this is a great way for us to build community. We, um, as you know, in the spring, um, our exec council goes through a refresh. So um, Judith Sebesta, our president of our council, is going to introduce our new exec council in just a moment. Um, and then we're going to ask you about what you're doing this summer. Um, then we've got some updates for you on OE Global, um, particularly around awards and also around conference. Uh, then a little touch on the federal grant that's outstanding right now, the open textbook one. Um, and then we want to talk to you about the annual survey results. And uh, thank you for uh, um, filling that in if you had a chance. And if you hadn't, we'll, we'll ask you to maybe consider giving us more information. And then we have a ton of things going on this summer. Um, which we'd like to tell you about. And those are opportunities for you and the folks at your college to participate in. And we hope that you find those useful. Uh, they are based on input that we received from you earlier this year. Um, and then other ways to get involved. And finally, at the end, um, Joy Shoemate, who is our VP of um, member, member relations uh, or membership, um, wants to lead a discussion for those of you who can stay and talk about member support and how we can provide more support for members. So any questions before we get started? All right. So first of all, I do wanna thank our outgoing council members. These are really hardworking people uh, who uh, make these who work with Liz and I on a regular basis and make possible um, all the work of the consortium. So Sue Tashjian out of Northern Essex Community College was our past president this year um, and um, it has, has done wonderful work uh, both here at CCCOER and in Massachusetts. Uh, Ted Intara Bumrung is the coordinator of library services at Roxbury College, um, and he's been on our council for several years now, and he's moving, he's not moving too far. Uh, he's, he won't be on the council directly, but he is going to be in our equity, diversity, inclusion committee, so he'll be continuing uh, leadership work. Ursula Pike, uh, the associate director of higher education at um, Digitex, um, has been the VP, the co-VP of our Equity, Diversity, Inclusion Committee for the last two years. In fact, she was the founding um, director, uh, I'm sorry, a VP of that. And um, she will continue on the committee, but she's stepping down from her VP position. Yeah. And uh, Jean Runyon, uh, Vice President of, at Larimer um, Campus of Front Range Community College is now as I think as of July 1st, is moving to um, Piedmont College in Virginia. Uh, did I get the state correct? <laughs> I noticed, yes. So uh, congratulations to Jean um, on her presidency and um, all the work that she did with us. We are so thankful for it. And I know that we'll hear from her again as she gets her, her feet on the ground there at uh, Piedmont College. And finally, we wanna thank Nathan, Smith from um, Houston Community College, who's been our on our PD, our professional development committee for I think three years and has um, just run some amazing panels and presentations for all of us. And I know that we all wanna thank these folks and for the work that they've done. And I now wanna turn it over to Judith Sebesta, uh, who is the executive director of Digitex and also the president of our um, exec council. Thank you so much, Una, and good afternoon or good morning, as the case may be. I'm looking at you, Sonny and Wade, and maybe a few others um, over there in Hawaii, but great to see everybody here at the meeting. And I want to echo Una's appreciation to our outgoing Executive Council members um, and to welcome our new Executive Council members who all of them have already been diving in um, to the work here. So uh, Michael Lamagna, who is at Delaware County Community College, which is in Pennsylvania, and we also have joining us Ryan McKenney at Kingsborough Community College at the City University of New York. 
and Paula McNeovitz, who is at the College of Southern Nevada. And as I mentioned, Sunny Pai, who is out at the Kapiolani Community College in Hawaii. And Andrea Scott um, is joining us as well on the Executive Council, and she's at Salt Lake Community College. So welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for agreeing to serve in this important capacity for CCC OER. And, and Judith, I wondered if you wanted to mention our new um, our new impact and research committee. Oh, um, yes. <laughs> Una, do you mind? Um, Next slide, or oh, would oh, you like me to? Did you want to say more about that? <laughs> I just wanted to say that um, you know, based on our surveys with members, um, there's a real desire for more information about um, measuring impact at your institution. And so we've created a new committee this year, uh, which will be headed up by Michael Lamagna and Sunny Pai. And it's around research, uh, not only um, you know sharing research, the existing research, but helping you to do some impact research at your own institution. Um, and so stay tuned for that. We'll, we'll have more information in the August timeframe around um, you know, opportunities to get involved and join that discussion. I hope I, I hope that was okay with you, Michael and, and Sunny. I know I'm sort of pre-announcing things, but they just joined us last month. And so it's still early days, but we know this is something really important to you. Great, thank you so much, Una. I appreciate you mentioning that. And we also have welcomed a number of new institutional and consortium members over the past year, including the Network of Illinois Learning Resources and Community Colleges, St. Charles Community College in Missouri, Central Arizona College, Cosumnes River College in California, Northeastern Junior College in Colorado, Northeast Wisconsin Technical College, and some new statewide consortiums, including in Illinois and Missouri, in Arizona and in my state, Texas. And the Texas Consortium has grown this past year to 20 members, including the new members that you can see here on the slide. Yeah, and I have to say, Texas is our largest consortium this year, not too surprising. <laughs> they, do it, they do it big in Texas. <laughs> well, I, my organization, Digitex, has been grateful to, to be able to work to expand the membership because we really, believe in and understand the value of CCC OER and OE Global membership. So thank you, Una. Thank you. So and I have the joy of doing the kind of leading our icebreaker for this meeting. And what we came up with was this question. And we just want to take a few moments to ask you to um, answer in chat, if you can, what is one thing you're looking forward to doing this summer, either personally or professionally. So if you, you have something you'd like to share and would like to put into the chat, go right ahead and, and I'll, I'll see if I can, I'll read a few of these. And Una, you just let me know when you think we need to go ahead and move on. Lisa, time with family and friends. Oh, Lisa, don't, don't we all need that? <laughs> What else? Oh, Mike, Mike, you're spending some beach time. Oh, I can't talk to you, I'm too envious. Moving into a new home. Oh, that's exciting. Oh my goodness, Elizabeth, that's wonderful. And visiting family in Chicago, Paula says, has it been there since 2019, summer 2019? That's, oh, that's so wonderful, Paula. Time for sun and fun, watercoloring. Oh, creative, good. Um, oh, Kate says she already had a trip to California and got married there. Oh my goodness, that you probably need to rest now. <laughs> uh, Robert says he's planning a, a trip to Uruguay. Oh my goodness, that's exciting. Summer reading, that sounds along the line of my relaxing plans, Annie. <laughs> that's wonderful. Oh, surviving summer projects, Kevin. Well, we hope you do. Ted's getting married in Copenhagen. Oh my goodness, Ted. That's amazing. Looking forward to paddleboarding, um, finishing the OER leadership training, Arlo. Um, that's wonderful, Michelle. Uh, and, and you said teaching a summer stats class. That sounds like a lot of work. Taking long weekend trips, um, be in Anaheim to watch the Angels play, the Mariners. Oh, that's great. Can't, oh, Lori, that's going to go camping. Um, Shinta's continuing to run Youth Soccer Academy and going on mini vacations. This all is just uh, makes uh, makes me a little envious of, of many of you, I would say. Suzanne's going to be working hard, making 
their Intro to Psych, Lifespan Development and Psychology of Gender OER text, ADA compliant. Good for you, Suzanne, for doing the good work. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, after finishing Arlo, maybe heading to Boston. Glad to see many of you participating in Arlo. And Alan is winning the battle with weeds in the garden. We wish you the best of luck with that, Alan. <laughs> that doesn't sound me easy. And, and Wade is going to be heading to Arlo in Boston. Um, hopes to see some of you there, and I'm pretty sure you will. And Sunny says she'll be wrapping up her leader, Arlo leadership project. So thank you all so much for sharing. Please, kid, as we continue the meeting, if you would like to share any more details or if anyone hasn't had to share please put this in chat because I am living vicariously through you because I don't I don't have a lot of plans except oh I will say except a major celebration my sister is, is has been announced cancer free after five years of treatment so we're going to have a big celebration for my sister so that's going to be my exciting plans this summer Una wonderful it looks like most people are going to get outside or, or get away from home for a bit um, and enjoy that um, it, which is which is wonderful. I think that's where we're all at right now. Um, yeah, and thank you for sharing that, Sandra. You're the new director of the Teaching and Learning Center at Chatt Chattanooga State Community College, and enjoying bringing your love of OER to that position. Wonderful. All right. Well, uh, thank you all for sharing that. Um, a little bit later, we'll talk about some of the summer activities that are available to you directly um, that you can fit in around those uh, those family trips and those camping and all those other wonderful things. That trip to Uruguay <laughs> sounds wonderful. And we're going to turn this over to Lisa Young, who is our former executive council president um, and also um, is um, an OE Global Board member director. She's on our director's board uh, for our parent organization. Lisa? Hi, everybody. Um, you know, talking about the summer, I feel like my big summer event was getting to attend the OE Global Conference in person in Nantes, France. It was absolutely amazing. It was a bit surreal to be in person again and get to see so many um, old friends and make new friends and um, get to explore a new place and most importantly, learn, learn, learn. And so um, what was really great about the conference, aside from just kind of having this return to a conference experience, which was so new to me, um, was the, so many things. But first of all, it was presented in multiple languages and um, the students at the University of Nantes created an app that created word clouds in four different languages and also you could have it on your phone and it was translating live um, the presentations that you were viewing which was so amazing um, whenever i get to go to the oe global conference I'm, I'm always so humbled by so many of the people who present in their second third fourth language um, and it was really great to be able to see people presenting in their first language. I absolutely loved it. I um, went to a couple of sessions in French and tried to understand as much as I could with my limited junior high French. Um, but it was great. And, and now what's even better is that so many of the sessions and keynotes were archived that we are able to um, go back and look at them with the closed captioning and the translations so that we can view them. So that's pretty great. Alan did an amazing job with the AND conference. Um, there were um, so many different um, sessions. There were Twitter spaces and coffee chats. I know I got to chat with Lori Beth and Alan and people online. And that was really like so fun to be connected with those of you that were not physically there, but we were still connected. There are some great unconference discussions that are available on our network. 
and um, there were exceptional keynotes. Um, Dr. Cyan Proctor, who um, is a community college faculty member who went to space, um, was one of the keynotes, and I had the opportunity to interview her there, and so that was really fun. The two of us had a blast, and it was amazing to see the word clouds that were generated up on her presentation behind her as she was presenting, um, and to see what was happening on Twitter in regard to the reactions. Um, also, um, the keynote from, um, oh my gosh, I cannot remember his name, from Ecuador was absolutely transformative. And um, maybe someone can put that in the chat because I, I, I cannot remember. But it was just a really fantastic um, experience and so much is still available to us, available online. The AND conference continues to go on through our OE Global Connect. And so definitely go on there. There are some great on conference discussions. You can see the archive sessions um, and it's pretty amazing. Also, I have to give a shout out to Liz and Lori Beth um, who did a great workshop I got to attend. Um, they used a lot of the material um, from the work being done on our um, anti-racism um, work and it was a great session and I'm so grateful to have been able to attend that. Um, so the next conference is going to be in the fall of 2023. So no conference this fall in person, but next in fall of 2023, it's going to be in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And um, Norquest Community College is going to be hosting that. And I believe that Robert Lawson from Norquest is on the call. Robert, do you want to say anything about hosting the conference in 2023? Yeah, thank you very much, Lisa. So um, I'm an instructional designer at Norquest College in Edmonton, Alberta. And um, we're very excited to be hosting the conference in 2023. Um, Norquest is a very unique institution. It's um, a community college that has programs in a, in a very diverse range of subject areas, nursing, healthcare aid, et cetera. But it's also known as a place that is very welcoming to new Canadians. So we have um, some very good ESL programs. We have um, apprenticeship, apprenticeship preparation programs. Um, we also have a very large uh, Indigenous learner community. So 10% of our students are uh, Indigenous. Um, and um, we have a strategy of indigenization and um, EDI is one of our college priorities as well. So that's probably going to be um, work somehow into the into the conference theme, something about EDI and indigenization, which is great. So um, I actually have a, um, a promotional video here for Norquest, so you can get a bit of a glimpse at um, the city of Edmonton and the college as well, and um, just sort of see what things look like and um, what the venue is gonna look like as well. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Robert. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the conference. Um, it's so Helping hockey season will be have kicked off and to be able to go um, right now like you know it's hockey night tonight uh -huh. and um, I'm really I've never been to an NHL game in Canada and so uh -huh. just be hoping that I can have that experience while I'm there too. That would be great yeah. Yes. Yeah. I just um, so to add that we, we should get Robert connected to our EDI committee. I'm sure they would love to help you with um, the theme and, and how that might un, uh, evolve. That would be wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. We'll contact you. Fantastic. And I um, want to also make sure that you all know about um, our OE Global Awards and um, the Open Education Awards of Excellence. And so nominations are open until July 31st. And we have a number of awards, as you can see here. We have our special awards, we have people awards. Um, in regard to what we share and how we share. And so please check out the link um, awards.oeglobal.org for more information so that you can nominate people in your organizations or people that you know outside of your organizations for these um, awards. 
So, and they do close on July 31st. So, you know, you want to start there. It's not just a little application. There's some really good meaty questions in there. So you want to make sure you get those um, started as soon as possible, but please nominate um, people in your organizations or that you know that, um, you know, have done amazing things. And um, that's what I've got from um, the OE Global Board. Well, oh, and yes, um, Liz mentioned you can nominate yourself as well. Yeah, and a lot of the awards are project based, so it they would be kind of team awards. So yeah, get get your team together and work on that application. Thank you, Lisa. Um, and you know, community colleges have um, played a major role in the OE awards recipients. So um, it's certainly not just a university thing. It's um, we're doing the work and, and we're being recognized. All right, thanks so much, Lisa. All right, Shinta, I think wanted to take this one and talk to you about the Federal Open Textbook Grant that opened just about a month ago. I do, thank you, Una. Well, everybody, so there is an exciting opportunity uh, being offered to us by the US Department of Education, and it is the Federal Open Textbook Grant. Uh, this. Uh, uh, application is due July 25th, which really is just around the corner. I know it might seem like, oh, it's still more than a month away, but you know how summertime flies really fast. Um, and really the essence of this is to allow applicants to uh, apply for a really big grant um, that will help them form uh, open educational textbooks, resources for underserved, under uh, research populations, um, what's unique about this particular uh, grant is that institutions of higher ed and state higher education agencies are eligible and applicants have to form a consortium of at least three higher ed institutions. There are other additional requirements that need to be met if you and um, your higher ed friends and colleagues are interested in applying, you can certainly click on that federal notice link, it'll lead you to the specific requirements. Um, the Department of Ed is planning to um, fund up to five grants, anywhere between 500,000 and 2 million, and awardees will know by the end of the year. So this is something that you certainly want to apply this year, if possible. Uh, I wouldn't wait if I were you. Um, and in fact, um, my understanding is that if, if an application is not accepted this time around, they may be reconsidered for next year. So in other words, if this is something that you're really interested in doing, apply this year instead of waiting until next year. Um, there are a couple of examples there that you can take a look at uh, written at the bottom of the screen. So we've got OpenRM that was led by Chippewa Valley Technical College in Wisconsin, CC Echo led by West Hills College Lemoore in California, Massachusetts Open Textbook Pilot led by Framingham State University, and that, all, that includes um, Northern Essex, Essex Community College and several other community college, uh, colleges in the state of Massachusetts. There's also Open Oregon Open Textbook Pilot led by the Open Oregon, Oregon uh, Educational Resources Team. And then lastly, Open Text Rural Arizona led by Yavapai College in Arizona. So if you're interested, don't wait, don't hesitate, um, go ahead and and apply with, uh, like I like Ed says, uh, consor a consortium of at least three higher ed institutions must apply together. Um, there's also asynchronous discussions being held on OEG Connect. So if you want to uh, go to that bit.ly link, you can take a look at some conversations, discussions that are already happening right now about this. So you can see, and you can use it to also ask questions. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah Shinta, wow, thank you. That's wonderful. <laughs> and that page also has information from Spark and um, a couple of other of our colleague um, organizations, I should say our sister organizations that um, are um, that work regularly on these grants. So thanks so much. Um, I, I'd also um, invite anyone who's working on the grant to sh perhaps share that in here. Um, if, if you feel comfortable, just share that you're looking at the grant as a possibility for this coming year. It's nice to know who's, who's applying. All right. Uh, yeah, thank you, Lisa, for adding that the um, that Maricopa Community College um, was one of the, along with um, yeah, the Arizona State was one of the early open textbook projects. All right, Liz Yada, this is your slide. All right, so just to remind everybody what we've been doing for the past year, we had um, ten webinars. Um, three of those were our Open Ed Week um, webinars, which had a theme of open education leadership this year. We had five member meetings. 
Um, in total for the webinars, we had over 700 people attend. Um, in the spring, we we're averaging over 90 people per webinar. Um, and our top webinar um, was sustainable OER course design. And all of our um, webinar topics are taken from what our members tell us is um, of interest to them. So thank you to all of you who filled out the survey last year. Um, for this summer, oh, Oops, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> for this summer, we've got the EDI book club going on um, with a lot of help from Andrea and Ursula. We've got some informal summer conversations, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, Alan's also doing another uh, open pedagogy summer adventure. And uh, just, you know, to let you know some of the things that CCC OER works on, um, some grants we're working on is we're working up, um, just wrap, wrapping up our Open for Anti-Racism, our second cohort, which is, I think, about three times as big as our first cohort. So it's been <laughs> exciting. Um, regional leaders of open education. Um, and we have also been working on the California Consortium for Equitable Change Hispanic Serving Institutions called CC Echo. All right. <laughs> and just to remind everyone, we recently published our strategic plan um, and you can find it on our website under the about tab. And um, hopefully we're gonna have an annotation uh, exercise set up soon so we can get your feedback and how we can take all these wonderful words and actually make them into actions. All right, thank you, Liz. Anything else on, on the strategic plan? I don't think so. Okay. We did have several webinars on it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> this year, if you wanna catch up. And um, yeah, and like we've been mentioning, we really do value your input. So if you haven't, um, I think we've had about maybe a third of you um, of our co colleges represented so far. So um, if you haven't, please, please uh, let us know. You know, we want to know what's important to to you and how we can best serve our, our members because we are a community of practice. So we don't want to just um, we don't want to just do what we feel like doing. We do very much value your feedback. <laughs> Maybe we do, but that wouldn't be appropriate. <laughs> well, we try not to. <laughs> yeah. um, and just, a, a, this is a map showing, um, I just took this out of our survey tool, so showing who's um, responded. So pretty, uh, well, I think it's pretty in line with our distribution of members um, and the roles, a lot of uh, mostly administrators, uh, most of our people who responded were from individual colleges and li librarians, which we, we know are um, very important in OER and we're tied with uh, e-learning and professional development where that was there. Okay, and Judith wants the link in the chat. So I'll put that in in a second. Oh, thank you. All right, thanks, Liz. Um, very quickly, a couple of highlights um, from me um, sharing is that last year, 41% of our respondents reported an increase in OER interest. Um, and um, this year, 68% of respondents reported an increase in OER interest. So we think that's a really wonderful um, to hear that. Um, and um, for those who have stayed the same or decreased, we, we want to hear more about that um, when we get to our member discussion and see if there's things that we can help with. Um, let's see. Um, is I can't remember now. Mike, are you taking over at this point or am I continuing? <laughs> you, you are. Okay, I am. Okay, so this is still mine. Sorry about that. Yep. But we try to share all this wonderful news. So we ask every year, what is your most successful aspect of your open education program? And I would say for the last three years, at least since we've been asking that question, it's saving students money. And this year, where it as it still is the largest one, so you can see the blue is last year and the red is this year. 
um, saving student spending has moved down. I think as we mature in our open education programs, we're seeing that saving student spending is important, but um, there's other aspects that um, are, are equally important and are definitely moving up. So increasing student persistence, enhancing teaching and learning, um, and then equity, diversity, and inclusion went down slightly this year. So not sure what that was. Um, later on, when you'll see the survey, you'll see that there's a, a big interest in equity, diversity, inclusion. So I'm not sure if that was just a little blip. All right, and back to you, Shinta. All right, so members had um, cited what supports they need to continue their work in this area. So here are some of the top OER professional development needs. So measuring impact and anti-racism. We talked about measuring impact earlier, so that's it's good that that's a, a top need and we will be sure to address that. Open pedagogy and sustainability is another one. Bookstore collaboration and workforce slash OER course design. And what, one thing to, to notice is that sustainability, bookstore collaboration and workforce OER moved up this year. So it's good to see um, you know, some, some changes there, but uh, we will be sure to help address those needs. And then some challenges that members cited, faculty buy-in and burnout, um, as well as little to no funding, 21% of the members said no funding, and then lack of strategic plans and competing initiatives at their institution. And another thing to highlight is that uh, challenge number one and challenge number two switch places this year, but still remain at the top two. Yeah, thank you, Shinta, for that. And I do think it just represents that it's been a long two and a half years and uh, faculty are not looking, many are not looking for new opportunities just at this moment. They're just trying to kind of tread water and, and get re-energized. Um, and I think we're seeing that in, um, in the survey results. Anything else, Shinta? I'm all good, thank you, Una. Okay, and Shinta is our VP of Professional Development um, and she works with her committee on planning all our professional development webinars. So um, this input's really important to them. All right, I think this is yours, Mike. This is mine, thank you, Una. When we asked um, the survey respondents about funding sources uh, this year compared to 2021, you'll see that federal and state grants dropped this year about 15% and the College Department and Innovation Fund uh, grants increased by about that same amount. And I wonder if that's because some of the colleges have focused when OER as a result of the pandemic, so they put more money into their, their departments. Uh, it'll be interesting to unpack that a little bit. And we also uh, heard that private donors increased about 10% this year. So uh, any increase in funding to, to help this uh, initiative is always welcome. And then the, the next slide, we, we asked about priorities. And if we can, or Liz, get to the next slide. I'm sorry, did I miss a beat there, Mike? Yes, if you get to the next slide, there we go. Um, we, we asked you to rank your priorities um, 2022. And you'll see that, you know, the top priority was improving student success, followed by increasing equity. Uh, as our awareness has matured, as the, the focus on OER has matured, uh, you can see that dropped this year to 78% from 94% last year. But I'm, I'm really encouraged by this improving student success and increasing in equity, um, because I think it will flow right into what we're doing with the research impact that Michael and Sonny are, are leading. And, and how do we quantify student success? What, what measures do we look at? And then with the equity piece, I think that flows really well into what Lori Beth is gonna talk about in the, the summer conversation and this focus on social justice. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Lori Beth. Thank you. It's nice to be here with everybody. And um, I just wanted to say that yesterday we had a, a rather delightful, um, if you can call, 
a discussion on social justice delightful. We were sharing lots of resources and had some good conversations about um, using a, a social justice framework to guide some of our work and evaluate some of our work in uh, open educational practices. Um, the conversation is ongoing. I'll put the link in the chat to the OEG Connect place where you can contribute as well. Um, again, I chose a few questions, but definitely um, we can expand those questions and you can add topics and uh, whatnot. We have a July topic in our summer conversations coming up on strategic planning led by Matthew Bloom. And in August, Michael Lamagna and Sunny Pai will be um, introducing us or helping us out with um, impact measurement. And uh, that's what I have. Thanks. Thanks so much, Lori Beth. Um, mm -hmm. And it was a wonderful conversation yesterday. And I, I want to also thank Matthew, who will be leading one in July, and also Michael and Sunny in August. All right, over to Andrea, who is our um, our co-VP of the Equity, Diversity, Inclusion Committee. Yes, thank you, Una. So um, I am here to talk about our summer book club. And um, this is um, a book we, we've had a, a couple sessions already. Our next session is coming up on June 30th. Um, we have meetings synchronous and asynchronous, if you're interested. And the book we're reading is Equity and Inclusion in Higher Education Strategies for Teaching. Um, we do have some spaces left if you're interested in facilitating um, those dates uh, available are June 30th, we have one spot and also one spot available on August, August 11th. So part of the um, book club group, there's also a um, CCC OER facilitator, um, inclusive facilitator guide um, and training that we provide. So anybody interested in facilitating um, is welcome to reach out and we can provide um, the link. But if you want to facilitate, um, we will share the link here. And also, if you're interested in participating in the book club, uh, we would love to have you. Um, the book club, generally, there's some, some questions and lots of great discussion that goes on and, and a bit of content that's also brought. Um, if you are, if you are unable to purchase the book, um, we will cover the, the main um, points of the book. So please don't let that be a barrier uh, for part participating in the book club. So I think that's it. Um, we hope you hope to see you there. Like I said, that our next one is June 30th. Um, if anybody from the EDI book club is here or EDI committee wants to add anything, uh, feel free to jump in. I'm just gonna pause for a minute. Hi, Andrea. This is yes. Wade. Yes. Hi. 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 Yeah, I just wanted to uh, add that um, if you are interested in the book club and um, you haven't, uh, you don't have a copy of the book yet, um, uh, what you can do is because the uh, next um, uh, um, book club session is next week, um, chapter five is actually available free online. And so I'm going to put the link there. It, it's only chapter five. So um, please, if you are interested in joining the book club, please do request a copy if you don't already have one, but um, you are able to uh, read chapter five um, and then um, attend next week's book club. Thank you. Yes, Wade, thank you for um, bringing that up. I appreciate that. And also, if you're interested in facilitating CCCOER, we'll purchase the book for you. So great. Hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea and Wade. And um, I don't know if Wade mentioned this, but he is the facilitator for next week. So <laughs> it's going to be great. Hope to see you there. All right, Alan Levine, Summer Pedagogy. Hello, everybody. And uh, we already know how busy people are. And no, I will not pick your weeds if you saw my patch. Um, but um, uh, not more about OEG Connect. I'm, I'm really happy to see that CCC OER is taking advantage of using our community space, not only for the um, programs mentioned, but Arlo is using it very extensively. Uh, last year, we, we did some experimentation with some different formats, some live, some asynchronous. Uh, this year is just a, a completely unstructured, but if anybody is interested in following along in, in this version of the Summer Pedagogy Adventure, 
it's just you create your own topic and say what you're interested in or maybe what you're trying to um, you know, produce, investigate, research, uh, build over the summer, work on your classes and just a chance to share what you're doing kind of in a, in a format. You can come back and, and update. And I, I've more or less put my interest in, I'm, I'm doing some experiments uh, pursuing with uh, H5P, which is my favorite uh, OER technology. And um, I'm so tired of hearing the hype about AI. I'm just trying to understand it by trying to find things I can do um, uh, so I can experience it myself rather than just trying to take my understanding from blog posts and um, papers I can't really understand. So it's just an informal way of sharing kind of what you're interested in looking at this summer. And um, if anybody wants to join me, uh, join along. And so um, thanks for listening to me yammer again about OEG Connect. Thank you, Alan. And you know, Alan is, um, I've forgotten exactly what your title is um, at uh, OE Global, but you're kind of the an ed tech tool uh, guru. Um, so you need some free tech support. <laughs> I shouldn't say free, but um, Alan is there and um, always answers all of our questions. And so um, don't hesitate. I know a lot of people are interested in getting the H5P going and um, He's, he uh, is quite expert in that area, having taught several workshops. So, all right. Now over to Karen Cangelosi, our program director for Arlo. Thanks, Una. I'm always excited to talk about Arlo. Uh, we just finished up our third online leadership program with our third cohort and several folks from Arlo are actually in the Zoom here today. And I welcome anybody to chime in that wants to say anything about Arlo, but, um, we are um, now in the midst of planning an in-person event, which brings together participants across all three cohorts, as well as we've invited people in that are new that can be part of a fourth cohort. And so anybody that wants to come join us in Boston, uh, July 22nd and 23rd, it's just about a month away. Uh, we do have some space. I may be just out of scholarship money, but I'm still looking at the budget. So if you want to come to Boston, I might be able to cover hotel room. Um, but please, I'm going to just put the link in the chat here. You can read the details about the summit. But we are about strategic planning. And I was listening as Shinto was talking about how um, one of the problems for folks at institutions is the lack of a strategic plan and also that there are competing initiatives. And I, and I think actually that one of the things that we try to emphasize in the Arlo network is that you can kind of integrate the kinds of initiatives that are already happening at your institution with your open education initiative. And we talk a lot about that. So those two things don't have to be um, in, uh, antagonistic to each other. So please join us in Boston. I'm happy to answer any other questions about the Arlo Network. Um, our funding comes to an end in January and we're hoping to resubmit and have another couple of years. So we'll, we'll see how that goes as well. So thanks everybody. Thank you so much, Karen. Um, and Arlo, the Arlo Network program was a new one um, what, about a year ago to date, actually, right? <laughs> yeah, Karen launched Almost, almost two, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, launched that back in May um, of last year. So very exciting. Um, and I know that a lot of people have benefited from that and will continue to. All right, so. We are actually doing really well on time. I want to thank everyone for that. Um, we're now going to turn this over to Gracie McDonoghue, who is um, our VP of Website Blog, and she's going to tell you more about how to get involved if you're if you're not already involved enough. <laughs> Thanks, Erna. Um, so there are a few other ways to be involved with CCC OER. Since um, I am doing the website, I'm going to talk about the blog posts first. Um, if there is anything that you're doing or your institution is doing to advance OER um, and you want to write a blog post about it, that would be amazing. We're always looking for new ideas and we are open to absolutely anything related that you know you want to put out there. Um, we could do a blog post about open ed news or programs, not even necessarily programs and news that you know is going on with you, but maybe somewhere in, in your surrounding community. Or if you wanted to do an open education think piece, that would be a great one too. If you 
kind of have an idea that you're thinking about and you want to talk through it, please contact me anytime. Just send me an email. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Um, also, if you want to contribute to the series of posts about EDI, that would be awesome. And the student impact experiences with OER, we love student stories. Those are the best things that we have and the best way to engage other people in what we do. So if you have an amazing um, student impact story and you want to share it, that would be great. Um, obviously we have like quite a few conferences going on. Um, there is a list on the website of all of the conferences that are upcoming. I try to keep that up to date as possible. Um, so if there is another conference coming up that you don't see listed on there, please send it to me and I will add it to the list and a way to register for it. And then also um, committee opportunities. You know, if you want to be on the membership committee, if you want to be on EDI or research and impact, um, there's different opportunities. I know that Joy and Paula and I have been collaborating for the membership committee and just kind of thinking about different ways to get new members and to, um, you know, just like what might people, what I guess what might appeal to different people um, and, you know, different ways to market that. So if you want to be on any of the committees and you want to collaborate anything, we would love to hear that. So thank you so much. Thank you, Gracie. And if, if you could put your email address in the chat window, maybe that would be really helpful. Absolutely. I will do that. And I see that, Sandra, and I will contact you. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Thank you. So um, before we're just about to switch to our member support discussion, um, but first of all, I wanted to share with you our calendar of events. Um, I think you've heard about most of this that's going on, but um, in mid-August, um, Shinta Hernandez and her team will, um, will announce the fall webinar series. So stay tuned for that. Um, we've got the Arlo in-person summit dates there in case uh, you didn't catch those earlier. And then the fall all members meeting um, will be September 1st. Um, and finally, um, we mentioned the open ed conference at the bottom there, the virtual one that's happening in October, because I think many of us will be there um, and it'll be a great time for um, us to connect. Um, and, you know, lastly, before we turn this over, I just want to thank everyone in our community who makes this possible for us to discover and share ways to uh, open up education to support students. Um, I think um, sometimes we don't we don't turn around and, and look at the work we're doing and, and really um, you know give ourselves a little pat on the back and say we are working towards something really valuable for students. And so I want to say thank you and thank you for helping our our um, community of practice to support that goal. All righty, I am now gonna turn it over to Joy Shoemate, who is our uh, VP of membership. She works with um, Paula, and I'm not, <laughs> Paula from College of Southern Nevada. I still haven't gotten Paula's name down, Paula M. And she works with Cindy Domica out of Nicolay uh, College. And she and Cindy have been uh, partners for quite a long time. And we were thrilled to have Paula join us this year. All right, Joy, would you like to start, uh, start the discussion? and? It's really an opportunity to share. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Una. Um, and I really appreciate you also introducing Paula and Cindy. Um, and we've also been really grateful to have um, Gracie join us in a lot of these conversations um, as well. So really, this is an opportunity for us as a larger community. Oh, I apologize for the background noise. <laughs> um, this is an opportunity for us as a community to come together and just um, share some ideas. Really, um, as the membership committee, we are wanting to know uh, from all of you what you want out of the membership and how we might be able to um, strengthen what it means to be a member of CCC OER. So I just have a couple of um, kind of broad questions, but I welcome you to either put some ideas in the chat or feel free to unmute. But um, a lot of this, just like 
the survey results and um, you know Gracie shared some ways to get involved. Anything that you share here and now um, will help inform what we plan and what we work towards as a committee. And we also welcome you to join the committee uh, if, if that interests you. But I really just wanted to kind of open it up with a very broad question, which is, um, what, what is it that you want or seek out of your membership with CCC OER? Um, and, and how can we support you with that? So I'll pause. Great, great question, Joy. And as people are thinking um, or, or typing, um, I, I put a comment to, um, <laughs> so Joseph wants grant writing. Grant writing. <laughs> Uh, at least one of our respondents said that OER interest had decreased at their college. And um, I'm wondering if there's ways that our community can help with that. Thank you, Una, for that. Maybe um, what I can share are some of the ideas that as a committee we've been discussing and sort of wrestling with and we will be um, working to implement some solutions in the coming year. Um, but some ideas that we have been discussing are um, really ways to better connect to the membership. So, you know, all of the wonderful professional development events that are offered through CCC OER and um, the amazing committee that plan all of those. You know, we were discussing as a committee, maybe ways that we can better reach out to participants or attendees of those events, um, just to kind of touch base, see, what you got out of it? Were there any lingering questions? Are there other members maybe we can connect you to um, as a result of attending some of those professional development events? So that was an idea that we had um, as Gracie was uh, sharing um, not long ago, really trying to connect the larger membership to events that might be uh, closer to your region or your area. So making it a point to try to publicize events. Um, so even if maybe you can't attend, there, you might have a colleague in, a, in your region who might be able to attend some events. Um, so those are some of the initial ideas that we had for ways to strengthen our, our membership. Um, oh, and I see some messages in the chat. So Kevin um, posted a comment about change the messaging. So that would be interesting. So cost savings may not play to all on. Yes, okay, great. So Kevin, thank you for that comment. Um, Kevin put a really nice comment in the chat about how um, perhaps some of those survey results changing are the result of um, the interest, perhaps not necessarily shifting away, but new interest in OER as a tool for equity and social justice. Thank you, thank you for sharing that. Um, Suzanne, um, enlisting the help of student government. Great, great. So listening to our students to actually learn what it is that uh, our students want and need. Thank you. And I see also Michelle has put, um, most recent grants have required, yes, like multiple faculty or institutions um, to work together on grants. I see, so. Okay, so lobbying for, for grants that make it easier for individuals or adjunct faculty, great. And you know, that's a really good point. You know, perhaps there's a way, um, Michelle, maybe we can talk offline about, maybe there are ways too that CCC OER can support bringing um, different members together perhaps um, so that when you see opportunities that interest you maybe we can help connect to other members who might share a similar interest in applying for a grant so thank you that's a wonderful idea Michelle um, okay I see a comment from Teresa about outside speakers having an impact Great. 
and Lori Beth, it can be lonely coming from a small college. So uh, yes, uh, thank you so much for all of these really wonderful contributions. I'm definitely um, picking out, and I think Lori Beth summarized it really great, connections really being uh, important. And, um, you know, despite these really wonderful webinars, we will be working as a committee to try to find some ways to better connect the membership. So in addition to attending, um, these wonderful events, finding opportunities to really uh, connect as individuals and connect as campuses. Um, so thank you all so much. I will be sure to put my email in the chat. So if there are some other ideas that come to you or if you have um, you know, something you're excited about or if I missed something in the chat, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Um, Paula, Cindy, um, and even Gracie, um, we would love to hear your ideas because this will really inform the work we do in the next year to, um, I think, to try to better connect us as a community. So thank you, Una, for, for this time and thank you all for your contributions. Uh, thank you, Joy. Um, well, we are at the last uh, few minutes of our of our meeting. I want to thank everyone for staying around for that discussion. and. Um, you know, continue, thank you, Joy, for putting your email in there. Continue to send input to Joy, and um, you can also send that to Judith and I as well. Um, so we'll make sure it gets to Joy. Um, so I just want to say have a wonderful summer, and I wonder if um, <laughs> if, there, if anyone has any other comments or any other needs at this time before we, um, before we go. Well, we're going to hang out here for a while. Um, so for another few minutes. Uh, so um, I think we can turn off the recorder. Um, and yes, I agree. It was great to see everyone and sometime soon, hopefully in person. <laughs> so.